Hey everyone, this is Kirk here again at Option Alpha. So today we're gonna to talk about NVRP for options trading, what it is, how you can visually understand it. I know I'm a sucker for a good visual, so hopefully this helps you understand visually what we're talking about here and how you can find new opportunities using NVRP um, and then eventually how you can automate those using Option Alpha. So this is not a new concept, this concept of looking at implied volatility versus historical volatility, but the guys over at Tasty Trade did come out with a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month or two ago, this metric around NVRP, which a lot of people liked, and then we added to the Option Alpha platform last month. So it is inside the Option Alpha platform. So I just wanna help you understand what it is, how you can use it. Again, there's other research that's been out there that will show you from AQR years ago around the same concept. So it's not a new concept, but maybe just a potentially different new metric that you can use for looking at implied volatility versus historical. So again, what are they? Why should we care? So first of all, we have to understand what implied volatility and then historical volatility is. Implied volatility is a huge component of an options price, as we've talked about many, many times tends to overstate the actual realized volatility of a security's future price movement. So this naturally makes intuitive sense because implied volatility is the collective, what I call forecast determined by traders. And we can't accurately predict the future yet. So often we tend to overestimate in both directions. We think ten things tend to be better than they are or worse than they are. And so we tend to overestimate it. So for example, implied volatility might be 5% over the next month. So that's our forecast collectively as traders. We think and we price options to assume that the market's going to move 5% over the next month when in fact it only moves 4%. So we've overestimated it by 1%. And so what NVRP does is it basically takes this concept of implied or realized historical, however you want to call it, actual volatility, like future forecasts versus actually what happened. And it breaks it down into a ratio or a percentage so that you can use it moving forward for determining whether you should get into trades. Basically, are the trades right now priced with some sort of premium to the actual volatility that the security has had in the past? Or are they priced with some sort of discount, meaning that they're priced kind of too low? Maybe they're priced low and future or historical volatility has been high. So let's go through a visual here because I think this will really help kind of drive home the concept. I know people have had a lot of questions on this. So here's a visual that I created on it. So let's just take a stock that's just starting out here. So the stock is in the left-hand corner of your screen. This is a stock. We don't know what's gonna happen with this security, right? It's just starting out. But what we do know is we do know that the market is pricing in implied volatility of 10%. So let's just say that these lines right here, these dotted lines, these are the boundaries of 10%. So right now, as the market is starting to price future movements in this security, the market is pricing in or expecting a 10% move up or down in this security. That doesn't mean it's gonna happen every single time. It just means that generally on average, we should expect about a 10% move up or down. But now we start moving and we start to see where the stock actually moves. And what we find is that in this example, when you actually see the actual movements of the security, right? The actual movements of the security only go as far as 8%. So you look at now the realized volatility, some people call it historical volatility, it's all the same stuff, but basically this is just actually what happened. The actual volatility here is this dotted orange line or brown line, whatever you, whatever color you think that is, and that is the realized volatility, which is 8%. So now you can see that the market had this expectation that it was gonna move 10%, the actual movement was 8%. And so what you get from this is when you calculate NVRP, you actually get a 25% premium to the actual market move. So you calculate this out by taking the implied volatility minus the realized divided by the realized volatility, that gives you 25%. You can look at NVRP, in this case green, as being a premium, meaning it was beneficial for you to be a premium seller because the market was expecting a big move and we actually didn't get the big move that we were thinking. We were expecting 10%, we got 8%, so now there's a little bit of uh, an embedded premium here. This is that differential, so you could just visually think about it as that. So let's look at another example here, same thing, securities starting out in its infancy, so we don't know where it's gonna go, same 10% expected move, so this 10% is gonna be our two dotted or dashed uh, blue lines here. And then when we see the actual movement of the security, 
you can see that it's significantly higher. So the realized or historical for this example was 15%. And so you saw the market obviously have huge moves up, huge moves down, back up, back down, back up, right? And so now you get this very, very big range where the actual volatility, the historical realized, however you wanna look at it, is much bigger than what markets were expecting. And in these cases, you find that NVRP is negative. And so you have a negative number here where if you were to calculate this out, you know, at the beginning or, you know, looking back on it, you could see that NVRP is negative. So it doesn't really account for the fact that it was going to have really big moves. So again, if you want to think about this as potentially selling like an iron condor, what you don't want is you don't want the market to move outside of your range, right? So if I think about an iron condor, for example, this is the market, right? And I'm kind of here at the beginning. What I don't want with an iron condor when I'm selling it is I don't want the market to make these really big moves in either direction. So this is why it's important to use concepts and metrics like this, not like it's the only one you should use, but just concepts and metrics around this, because what you do want to do is you do want to take advantage of markets where the premium is much higher than the actual or historical volatility on average. Doesn't mean it's going to be the same moving forward, but just on average, you want to take those trades. Those are better trades where the market actually moves in this case inside of this range. That's our target for so like an iron condor or an iron butterfly. We want to be in this max profit zone. We do not want to see the market go outside of these bounds. Now, again, like I said in the beginning, this is not a new concept. Broadly speaking, this is a concept that's been around for a while. AQR has done research on this going back all the way to 2018 when they first published a paper on this, but they basically looked at the same thing, the volatility risk premium, and they looked at it in different changes and deciles of market volatility to see where the volatility risk premium was kind of more stable, which in this case was in the lower volatility decile. So when the markets had some low volatility, you could see that the average volatility risk premium was actually really good. In some cases, some of the lowest volatility deciles had the best on average volatility risk premium. The high volatility markets, like what we're experiencing probably right now, had the biggest disparity or range in volatility risk premium, obviously because markets are moving and trying to figure out what's going on with pricing. On average, it was still in the top you know, range of volatility risk premium. Um, but it definitely was the hardest market. So it doesn't mean that you can't trade in high volatility markets. It just means maybe scale back that position sizing a little bit because the markets are still trying to figure out what, what are the extremes here? What are we you know, trying to find? But again, the concept here is that it, it's really nothing new. This idea around you know, volatility premium and the difference between implied and historical has been around forever. There's just now new metrics on how we can look at it. Again, the research from AQR at the time was, again, long volatility positions i.e. net option buying strategies, can lose money even when volatility rises. That was a really important one. We've talked about this for years. This idea that you have to get the market direction right and volatility right when you're doing buying strategies. So option selling strategies are still the way to go. Just maybe scaling positions now by NVRP. And again, buying options on average was modestly profitable if you had the crystal ball assumption, which was direction. Again, passively selling options was significantly better. So how can we now use all of this moving forward? So what we can actually do is we can use this inside of Option Alpha with our Trade Ideas tool because we included that now inside of Trade Ideas. So again, Trade Ideas, what it's doing is it's running through and analyzing hundreds of millions of trades. You can see it just opened up. The market's just opened up today, so it's just starting its count of Trade Ideas that it's looking at. And what it's doing is it's actually looking through and pulling all these metrics on trades right now. Now, inside of Trade Ideas, if you don't have it already open, you can customize your columns and you can add NVRP right here. And again, we have a little write up here that shows you what it does and how it works. So you can add that here. And now it's included as a column inside of your Trade Ideas. So you can see the actual NVRP for different positions that you're looking at. And what I think is kind of cool about this is if you take a symbol like SPY, for example, so let's just look at SPY right now. And this is kind of market pricing as we go right now. So SPY, there it is. Okay, you look at SPY right now and you can see of all the trades that are in there, there's a lot of trades right now that have negative NVRP. So this would mean that these trades are not necessarily pricing in implied volatility 
high enough based on historical volatility, which we've had some crazy historical volatility. The difference here is that if we actually filter this by NVRP that is not zero, so basically just positive NVRP, then what we find are we find potentially the few opportunities where the market is pricing in implied volatility super, super high right now. And these will change. I mean, these will literally change by the minute, by the hour, as markets kind of fluctuate and as things change. But this is the difference here is that now you can go in here and you can filter for positive NVRP potential opportunities. Now you can see, okay, actually of all the SPY trades that are out there, these might be the best priced opportunities at this moment in time. And so that's how you use it inside trade ideas. When you are good with this, if you just wanna find these manually, you can do it like this, but then you can take the next step, of course, which is gonna to be to auto trade. You can do NVRP, positive SPY trades, right? Connect it to your brokerage account, like I can connect it to my trade station account, whatever the case is. It sets up the positions exactly how you have it set up here in the trade screen. And then you can see here in the position criteria all the way down here at the bottom, you can see that you can now set your NVRP to be between a certain range. So I could go in here and I could say not only positive, but it's got to be 5% to the top, right? So not only just positive, but it's got to be 5% percentage or higher. And once I'm good to go, then I create that bot. That bot is now created and inside of my scanner automation, it's going to automatically find positions that meet my criteria. And one of these criteria metrics is now going to be NVRP. So this would almost kind of ensure that you get into trades that have positive NVRP versus just randomly guessing on trades. Again, if you go into trade ideas right now and you look at trades, again, in SPY that just have you know, no other filters. There's a lot of trades right now that have negative NVRP, but if you filter this by trades with at least zero, so positive NVRP, there's a lot of different opportunities and they're kind of very hard to find, especially in this market because volatility is kind of all over the place. So hopefully that helps out kind of not only understanding what NVRP is, but also how you can use it inside of your bots and automations and option alpha can help you not only find trades that maybe are better priced than other trading opportunities, but then you can also add it to your bots and automations to automate that process moving forward. As always, if you have any questions or comments, let us know. We'll add links to all the resources right below this video, including the resources and videos uh, from the research team at Tasty Trades. You guys can go take a look at that and all the stuff that they publish. It's really cool stuff. And we are very happy that we can include it here inside the Option Alpha platform because I know a lot of people wanted this and requested it. So we got it in here last month for you. Again, if you have any questions, let us know. And until next time, happy trading.